up? What's poppin'? Um, been a little while. It's been a little bit. What's new? We say that just about every episode. Every game episode. Soccer, we have a new, uh, rockin' a new setup today. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> setup number, how, what episode is this? 20, 28? Something, yeah. 28, something, so this is probably like setup that. 20... Eight? Eight-ish? <laughs> Just about. But, ooh. It wouldn't be a good trap turnover episode if we didn't have a different setup, you know? You know, you're right. And we got it, the poster. It wouldn't... Kobe. It wouldn't be an authentic episode if something wasn't different exactly. and we weren't a month behind, you know? That's kind of That's... It's... Yeah, I don't... These things are weird. Sometimes they make a noise. Sometimes they I don't. Know, I think it's... I, we'll, we'll there might be some these. a lot of noises this episode because I'm definitely going to continue yeah you know we're, like, we're trying the couch out we yeah, did a couch, couch earlier like probably 10 episodes ago and we really liked it it's great um but now this is compared to the chairs we were using last time the, uh, yeah those doggy water I chairs right, I right over there. yeah I don't like yeah i don't like how those i like <laughs> no that's the problem is i like how those chairs look yeah and like you look cool sitting in them but they're just the worst chairs they to are. sit in you wouldn't guess it too they look they look comfortable in a second. It's yeah, they're they're they they're kind of they're, they're like not. a simplistic barbershop chair. Yeah. But and I you've sat in a barbershop chair, it's a nice chair, you sit comfortably in it, but these yeah. like you slide like, like you sit in it and the chair's like, I don't want you sitting on me anymore. No. You just slide right off the front. Yeah. So I had to go into manufacturing mode, try to change it up a little bit, and it kinda works. They kinda work now, but man. It's just not not the same. Yeah, and it, is, it wouldn't be a trap turnover episode if we didn't talk about the chairs, too. We're going to talk about you know, the chairs, <laughs> man. What else do we have to do? What else do we have? Uh, but, man, oh we're back. We're back, though. We're it's glad 20, to be 2022. here. 2022. It's a what new year. Yeah. It's a new year, <laughs> dog. Like, it's, okay, get this. This is our third. It hasn't been three years since we started it, but it's our third year. Yeah. Um, like, a third year. Uh, because we started in 2020. Established 2020. 22 now. Yeah, this is crazy, the third. Right? Yeah. Wow. That's crazy. That is weird to think about. It was an idea. It? it seems like it was an idea six months ago. Didn't even feel like, it doesn't feel like we've been doing it for. No. As long as we've done it. But Glad to be here though. <laughs> so Always glad to fun. be here, dude. We were just talking like 10 minutes ago. We're like, man, we have a podcast. Yeah. Cool. Like, that, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> It's just, kind of a trip, but gosh, we love it. It's our child. Yeah, literally. I wouldn't trade it for anything. Nothing. I mean, well, I would trade it for maybe something. Something. It would have to be pretty good, right? It'd have to be really good. <laughs> but, oh well. All right, what's, what's but, first up on the agenda today? But, man. So, here's what I'm thinking. Yeah. We've got probably the juiciest NBA talk we've had in a minute, so we'll save that for last. Fair. Um uh real quick uh, just to get it out of the way and it's not trap at all uh the weekend dropped uh the weekend did drop i listened to it you, you listened to it about half of it about i need i need to finish it before finish i it. form a f- complete opinion on it. yeah um you know i i'm not wild about the weekend i sure. don't open up spotify and click the weekend and listen to them ever yeah. i don't think i've done that once <laughs> um i didn't like the album yeah it's it's just it's and and I say this a lot I, I that's it's just my saying it's about what I expected but <laughs> yeah. like like honestly like like I yeah. you kind of figure it's gonna be an eighties ish themed album sure. that's what he's been working up that's what's popular yeah and it's it's what it was it was all right I mean he does yeah he he knows what he's doing he does a good job of it but he, it is yeah it's not like it blows you away no it didn't blow me away yeah and there's uh, you know honestly there wasn't even really any tracks that like just stood out to me you know sure pretty much any project that'll drop i'll be able to pick at least one or two tracks out of it and be like oh yeah, you know i could see see myself adding this to a playlist or something yeah. like that but not this case not not the case with this album and yeah and I'll, it, I see it being compared a lot to Tory Lane's album. Oh yeah, because that was also like an eighties, eighties kind of themed album. And I'm taking the Tory Lane's album all yeah. year long, dude. All That's honestly year. probably a spicy take. It is for the the average person. Yeah, which I I get why right, but I I think I well like I said I haven't listened to the whole album so, but for what I've heard so far, I think I'm gonna roll with you on that too. It's, I just like I think. 
Listen, like, well, I gotta finish the weekend's album first before I talk. Yeah. you know. On it. But the se- okay, I'm assuming you listen to like the first half. Yeah, like probably it's, six. Second half's not much yeah. different. It's about the same. Yeah. See, I like the production of it a lot. I might mm-hmm. have liked the production and like the quality of it more than Tory Lanez. Like, and certainly the weekend is a way better writer than him. <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like his songs have more meaning to yeah, it, right? Yeah, like, yeah. But I like the vibe though of Tory Lanez from what I heard. You know, yeah. compared to this. Yeah. Um, I just think it's like it's way more cheesy, of course, but you, it, he's trying to make it that. Like, yeah, the vibe he had from it was like he's just playing completely into the '80s like mm-hmm. vibe. I'm mm-hmm. just naming all the songs like some dumb shit, <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like Enchanted Waterfall. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but it goes hard. <laughs> yeah, I thought it went. Yeah, I thought it went hard. And like yeah. the thing, the thing too is like, like from the reviews I've seen online and stuff is, is there? I mean, everyone's calling the Weekends album the better '80s album. Yeah, but like when I when I think about it, I'm thinking, okay, which one sounds a little bit more eighties? And I've listened to a fair amount of like music from the eighties, like just mm-hmm. old, older music. I know what it sounds like. And I, I'm, I, I tried to put myself in a position where it's like, okay, I've never heard of Tory Lanez. I've never, oops, I've never heard of the weekend. I've never heard either of their albums. Yeah. If I listen to one track from either of them, which one is going to sound more eighties, which one is going to sound like it's from 40, 40 years ago. Oh, oh yeah, forty years ago. Eighties was that, just like twenty, would, 25, 30 that's years I ago. Thought, but apparently, four it's forty now. So <laughs> that's actually mind blowing. <laughs> Dude, did you know we're closer to like twenty fifty than we are to like nineteen eighty or something like that? That's really weird, man. That is weird. I don't know if I like that. Anywho, who knows what Trap Turner will be up to then, man? Do our episode. <laughs> Episode we'll probably be on like episode forty by now. <laughs> twenty fifty. We're on episode forty, <laughs> setup number thirty nine. We have two episodes in a row somewhere in the thirties where yeah. they're exactly the same. Yep. Yeah, but back to what I was saying, you know, yeah. it's just I feel like I feel like Tory Lanez had honestly, and this is just my opinion, had the more eighties sounding album. Okay. Like I I I could see that coming out of nineteen eighty four. More so than I could one of the tracks from the weekends, and that's it's weird to say, and that's not that's not like that's that's not to harp on either one of them, but right. like like the weekend he, he's just really he's he's just a really good singer, so it's he is, yeah, it's hard to take him back in time because music has evolved into something better, yeah, and that's what his voice is is something better than it was forty years ago. <laughs> But like, that's also the caveat to it is it's, yeah. it is better sounding music. It is more quality. It's got more meaning it's to got it. Better production value. A better say, production. Yeah. The weekend has a way better voice than Tory Lanez, mm-hmm. and I, I like Tory Lanez's voice in the '80s album. I don't like I don't like his rapping. I don't like his singing normally, yeah. but I really liked it I like, in that that's album. Like the best version of him I've heard. Like I don't really honest, like his music at all. No, I don't either. <laughs> I don't listen to Tory Lanez. No, ever. <laughs> But I, but I've I've had this album on repeat for the last Same. month, and it's like it's it's something good. about it. I don't know. I, it could just be me. It could just be no. It's it's not just you, dude. Because my my mom listens to the podcast, and she was like, "Oh, I heard your last episode talking about that Tory Lanez guy," and I listened to a couple songs, and I actually liked it. I was like, you <laughs> "Dude, know, I, yeah, got the mom approval." That's so. actually a good idea. I got to show my parents. <laughs> okay, yeah, that's a great experiment. I'm going to show my parents. <laughs> Some Tory Lanes and some Weekend and say which one sounds like Ooh, sounds okay. more like what would you rather be jamming out in high school? Mm. High school too, Tory or the Weekend? Yeah, if we're gonna. Do, I'm gonna do that. That's actually pretty. That's a good idea. See what the, the old timers like, think about it. Huh? I know they, yeah, <laughs> we'll do that. We might do that for like a TikTok or something. I don't Ooh, know. That'd be fun. I haven't really been too active on the social medias. <sighs> I haven't really been too active <sighs> in general, but I feel you. <laughs> it's all right. It's a new year. It's a new, new start. Year. We're new uh, year, new start. We're gonna be rolling, but bigger, better things happening takes time you know, you know what it is you know how i do baby yes sir um um what else not too much is going on musically um oh gonna gonna, gonna. dropped um DS forever what you what do you what you think what do you think i'd rank it a solid maybe i should save the rankings for after the thoughts i would say <laughs> To quote you, every episode it's about what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, it is though. It's it like it is though. It, is. it pretty much exactly. Um, and I was talking about this with you. I said Gunna to me is like filler. 
hip hop music where it's like the type of music that you just have on in the background, mm-hmm. throw a couple of the songs in your playlist and it'll just come on while you're driving and you don't yep. really think about it. It's yep. not like, it's nothing more than that to me. It's like, yeah. it's just kind of like some trap music. That's all right. In it's, my opinion. It's just like, it's, it's, he just makes decent music, decent trap music. That's what he's, that's yeah. what he's here for. That's, it's what we expect out of him. Mm-hmm. Like sure. He'll have, he'll have like maybe, four or five tracks in his whole career that stand out <laughs> yeah um like uh i can't really even think of any off the top of my top off it, i guess mm-hmm. this is one of his most famous ones i guess sure. i don't know i don't i don't really listen to him but like it, like he's, it's he's just filler like mm-hmm. like it was decent i'd probably rank it like a four out of ten you know I, yeah i give three and a but half like four. There's like maybe two or three songs. I'm like, okay, like I I listen to this, mm-hmm. but it's not anything more than that. I'm not gonna like analyze it, but like, wow, the lyrics are so good here, like yeah. anything like that. Yeah, <laughs> it's, it's just like, well, that's not even what trap music's about. I'm not trying to sound like a mm-hmm. like an Eminem fan or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> but like, lyrically, either? this is just. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I mean, it's yeah, it's just trap music, right? Yeah. And so, so yeah. I want to ask you this. Sure. Do you like like it, it obviously had that trap sound to it, start to finish, and that's that's what you're gonna get every single time from Gunna. Right. Do you see trap, at least from the production side, do you see trap music changing at all or altering at all from what it was even four years ago? You oh, know, when yeah. Savage was popping off sure. and Thug was coming on the scene like crazy, like yeah. I absolutely see it changing. Not in Gunna's music, though. Like, none, yeah. <laughs> like, I okay. like the beats in it, but it wasn't... If we're talking about this album specifically, none of these beats sounded like anything different mm-hmm. from, like, 2018. Yeah. No, they're very similar. I mean, but that's what Gunna's good at, right? He's got but his if you look at, and he sticks to it. If you look at, like, I mean, very, like, stereotypical example would be Cardi. Looking at yeah. how... Trap music is revolved around him and comparing his. He's always been like a trap artist, but compare his production t- now to what it was in 2017. It's very vastly different. Mm-hmm. Obviously, his voice is different and the way he his approach to it, but the beats too are different. Yeah, I would say. Um, I mean, Dial It and Whole Lot of Red are still kind of similar, but like it's not. You know what I'm saying? I think it's like no, they're definitely different though. Like, but they're it, different. They're- right? Yeah, they still have the hard hard beats, but it's very different production. So I think trap music is still like evolving slash like new trends are coming out of it, and new mm-hmm. like sub genres are coming out of it. Like how how but, long how much longer do you think trap music has? Mm-hmm. And I'm talking like core trap, like like the like future Young Thug, future Thug, Savage, that Metro, type, like that type that dominated the, like 2017, yep, like that the founding core of fathers it, of trap. Sure. I mean, yeah, like I guess as a genre, it'll always exist. It's just not always going to be what we're, our generation, what we're used to is that 2017, yeah, like future, yeah, goes, you know, that yeah. type. Ah, uh, I mean, yeah, that trend is already kind of starting to go away. I feel like. I can see it starting to go away a little bit. It's a little less like, I mean, back then it was just like kind of labeled as like mumble rap, like this, that. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and now it's just like, I don't know. I haven't even heard that term used in like three years, like unironically. <laughs> I, you know, are you talking mumble rap? Yeah. Yeah, I haven't really heard. Like only people who use that are like Eminem or NF fans probably. Yeah. The, <laughs> but yeah. no, that's, that's besides the point, right? But uh, <laughs> uh, I think it's different. I mean, like I said, Gunna's album kind of had the similar sound to like what we're used to with that. Mm. Like the Metro type beats, Southside yeah. type beats. But like, yeah, I think uh, it already is like if you follow underground music and kind of the whole rage like trap genre that's popping off with trippy cardi like all these underground guys like that's mm-hmm. already a different sound compared to what we mm-hmm. heard back then so i think it's gonna keep drifting in that direction yeah and like in a weird way i think the style of some of the production is gonna objectively well you can't really use that term of music but it'll, it'll it'll almost be less complex what is that noise I think it's a dog. Uh, dude, the neighbors have the most stupid dogs. We're trying to record a podcast. Here. Come on. <laughs> uh, what was I saying? I think, uh, I don't even know what I was saying. I was saying something. But I think, yeah, to answer your question, though, I think it is going in a different direction. I think mm-hmm. five years from now, like, 
so, like a beat from like DS2 or something will be something we're not used to hearing. <laughs> like, yeah. You know? Yeah. Well, and I think the thing... That's not a bad thing. Not a great no, thing. It's no, it's not. It, it's just... Yeah, it's, it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And I think that the thing with trap music too in general is it's very like... Like, like, uh, I just, it, like, just trap, it's not that versatile. Like, yes, you can go in different directions with it, and mm-hmm. that's what we're seeing with the rage and with, with mumble and with whatever you want. Sure. But, like, it's pretty, like, it's got pretty narrow boundaries as far as creativity, I feel like. Hmm. And, like, more, like, like, a lot less than, like, like a, yeah, like, say just normal rap or, like, uh, I, I get that. I mean, I guess it's even just a subgenre of rap in itself. Yeah, but it's not like like a <laughs> like country. You know, you yeah. can have two polar opposite country songs, but they're both they both sound country. But like I if gotcha. you if you have two different rap songs, you can have a trap one, and then you can have something just totally often different i you know i think i like half agree it just depends on how you cl- what you classify trap as yeah like, that is it could because yeah. you could technically include like drill yeah. plug and b yeah. all sorts of different styles of it emo rap that was huge a couple years ago even yeah. some of that could be considered it's just kind of what you classify it as because you do if you think about it at one end of the spectrum you, you could have like juice world and then like uh, I, I can't think of a good example on the other end, but you know, like you can, it, Corday. Yeah, like Corday, and mm-hmm. then you have uh, Cardi up here, and then you have Lil Durk in a different direction. Like, yeah, it's. I, I will say, yeah, it's probably it, it is all kind of similar in a way, but there is a lot of different vibes that you can you catch know, from right, it. Yeah, and a lot of different production. But like I said, I think it just depends on do you classify drill music as trap music or what i don't know i have no yeah. clue i don't know really even the definition at this point <laughs> we'll figure we'll figure out a definition for it and i think that'll help us out with sure. future conversations too. yeah we'll we'll let's i mean we can even google it too <laughs> yeah well, what is trap music it's in our name the podcast it's named after the trap turnover podcast that's, that's about <laughs> it's named it. after the podcast yeah. <laughs> yeah i don't know I mean, when I think I of, just think of future. When yeah, I think of trap music. no, I think of I think of eight oh eights and yeah. bowling high hats. Yeah. That's that's yeah. what I think of when I hear trap. But True. who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Depends on how you look at it. But if we're talking about rap as a whole genre, then in that case, I'll say it, it's it, yeah. it's vast. Yeah, 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 so yeah, many yeah. different. No, I agree with you with that. Yeah, especially in like the last five years, I feel like so much. It's oh, evolved. it's just going everywhere. In the past five years, I feel like rap has evolved more than it, like any other five year period. But I I actually can't speak on that because I wasn't around in the 90s or whatever so i have no clue but i feel like it no i think i no i think definitely in the last five maybe even more or less like (laughs) it rap has gone in so many more different places than any other genre has i feel like you know because you got pop country rock soul Mm -hmm. whatever and those are all like you can easily identify those and like yeah you can easily identify a rap song but like yeah they like they can just like they just they can be such polar opposite in sound and in mood yeah but exactly and there's always a new like meta for it or like a new like that's like the the ideal type of artist that everybody's trying to mm-hmm. be like and every year it switches i feel like yeah like this year last year is definitely like cardi <laughs> for a lot of the up and comers like yeah you can just see it in the production and vocals but then definitely in the up and comers then but if you go back to like 2015 then that's where it's like you can see future young thug me everybody's trying to be migos and like future yeah. back then you know yeah. <laughs> and then like juice world from like 2018 2019 you got all these emo rappers mm. popping out of nowhere like yeah <laughs> It's no, it's, funny. <laughs> it's it's crazy. Like yeah. how, how many different directions it goes. It's very entertaining. And then you just not to you know relate this to a whole different topic, but then you have like Kanye, who's just kind of doing his own thing. Yeah, you know, he's got yeah. his own genre of rap at this point. But you know, we we go on Kanye tangents too much, anyways. So. Yeah, we'll. Uh, <laughs> I just had we to really throw it in do. there. Kanye no, reference. Yeah. That's a trap turnover episode. Yeah, so. that's a, yeah. <laughs> We have, yeah, we, we got have. like a little checklist. You guys can play like Trap Turner or Bingo every episode. Like, <laughs> Kanye reference. Jackson says, "Did uh, it's uh, about what I expected." About what I expected. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's funny. Well, I yeah, that's about that's about all we got for uh, 
Yeah, is there? Music. I, I mean, mean, 2022 is brand new. It's we only fresh. really have those two, Gunna and The Weeknd, are like the two main albums that drop. Yeah. That, that I know about. I'm sure there's some under the radar yeah. ones that are good, but. Utopia is still supposed to drop. He really? said he's dropping he's it. He's still so. trying to drop that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we'll see what happens with that, I guess. Yeah, I don't. Yeah, I don't know how I feel about Travis anymore. I yeah. really don't. I, and I don't. I don't have any opinions on him. Yeah, I kind honestly, of really. like, I I listen to his music every now and then. That's about it. Yeah, it doesn't it does not? I'll say it does not hit the same. <laughs> it doesn't, dude. It does it, not. It does. It just. But, it's, yeah, that's a different topic. You guys already. You know, you don't want to hear yeah, us rant news. about it. Whatever. That's old news. Rest but, in peace. Um. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Anywho, uh, what else? You think who? Real quick, who do you think will drop this year that didn't drop like last year? Like, is there any Post Malone? You think Post Malone? Will, yeah, he's kind of due for an album, isn't he? Yeah, his yeah. last album came out twenty nineteen. I remember. I was like, I like that album. Like, I like Post Malone is kind of like artist for me now that I'm really like I can't. Yeah. If I go back to the album, I'll be like, okay, it's good. It's Got but right. back then when it came out, I was like, this is the best thing I've ever Dude, heard. yeah. No, that's <laughs> that's definitely the posty effect. Yeah. Like it like like he hits like mm-hmm. in a time. Like when he's dropping and relevant, like mm-hmm. like he hits. Yeah. He I does. like him. But like if he's not like if he's just chilling, like like what he's been doing, like yeah. if a posty song comes on, it's like, all right. If White Iverson comes on, be like, all right. Sure. But yeah. Well, question is, what kind of album do you think he drops? Because we just talked about the evolution of like rap music, but Post Malone's kind of not even a rapper at this point. I'm like, praying. I'm praying. I know what you're going to say. I pray to God it's a country <laughs> album, dude. Please get like, 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 okay, it's trapped to an I don't give a shit. We're talking about country. I want, I want to. I want to, <laughs> you just sat up like it's a close game of 2K. <laughs> <laughs> I want to post more country album so bad because like you know it's funny is yeah like how like we just said like we don't really go back to the <clears throat> post Malone music all that much yeah but this last like three weeks I've been going back to the two country songs that he did, he did a like live a cover, performance right? on and I have them on my I I have both of the songs on, on like my SoundCloud playlist or whatever and <laughs> I just. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's he's like he's definitely one of the most talented musicians we have. He's got today very great voice. It's of, so unique. It's like such a dense voice, mm-hmm. and it's 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 so meaningful. It's so purposeful. Every note is like uh, like he means it. Mm-hmm. But like he's also like hardly even trying. It seems like he's just yeah. kind of like singing. But yeah, I want to post country album. Mm. That's kind of all I had to say about that. Yeah, but, I like um, that. But other than him, more 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 trappy side. I uh... like. Would you rather him? What if he did like a? He could definitely kill like an '80s type thing, like Weekend and Tori did. But I mean, that's kind of being overdone already. <laughs> like, uh, I mean, if he, he can he do could, like like if he can really pull that off and make like a really good one, like I'm all for it. I think like could, I'm yeah. I'm all for the '80s sound because it's like. It's sick. It's coming back. It's coming back. Like, I don't <laughs> yeah. want to say it's something new because it's definitely not. That's the whole point of it. Yeah. But, like, it's something that, like, us haven't regularly listened to, regularly no. heard. It's not something that we're going to be like, oh, oh, I've already heard, you know, 80 versions of this. Right. So that that would be cool. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, uh, I don't I don't need another future album. I don't need a juice. I definitely don't need a juice no world more album. please for the love of god no more juice world i don't want a polo g album <laughs> i don't yeah. i don't want a little baby album he just he dropped kind of recently with i like, like the little dirk I, I thought it was decent it wasn't bad it was decent it wasn't bad i actually kind of liked it but it wasn't like insane you know yeah but yeah but i'm kind of with you though like his sound is unless he really tries a new sound or something if like, he can go wants and needs on like a mm. whole album or at least a good part of an album <sighs> that's a different story that would be uh yeah i i mean i i i would enjoy that yeah a lot i would enjoy that a lot yeah but me too. you can only expect so much from the younger guys these days like like it's it's slim pickings but yeah <sighs> oh you know who i do want who i want a kid cody album i do too and i think he 
might be dropping one too. Wasn't there rumors that he wanted to drop one? Like I don't remember when, but oh, he announced. There's I think a new so. One. Yeah, it's called like intergalactic. I don't know some so, some, rather, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> some space name. Yeah, I want mine. I want mine to kick Cuddy album. I really I liked like that, his yeah. last one, Man on the Moon Three. That is it. That album aged quite well, in my opinion. That was a great album. It really was, man. I'm like, not sick of any of the songs. No, and I've listened to a, a fair amount of them. Pretty, I really, I listen too. to them pretty regularly. Yeah. I'm not sick of any of them. No. If anything, some of them, one thing I've noticed is like my favorite ones when it started. I still like them, of course, but like yeah. I have different favorite songs from it now. Yeah. yeah which yeah. that's how you can tell it's a good album when like you find yourself liking mm-hmm. different songs from it over the years. Like, oh, well, yeah. it's only been like a year at this point, but no, that's a great album. I'd yeah. love another Cuddy drop. I w- yeah, I would too. Um, um, I'll ask you a similar question. Yeah. If okay. You, not, not necessarily one person. If you could have a duo album. I think about this quite often and it's funny like <laughs> I think like yeah like you said I don't want like individual future album or even like a new Drake album mm-hmm. Ooh. what a time to be alive too though oh that I do want and I've heard yeah. rumors of them being in the studio and working together I will say this man like Drake and future is such a good duo like I didn't yeah, like certified lover boy I like the song with future both of them, honestly. Mm-hmm. Well, Way Too Sexy is kind of a meme song at that point. But yeah. Fair, was what was it? Not Fair Trade. That was a Travis one, uh, right? In Too Deep. In Too Deep. That was my favorite one on the album. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, I listened to that one probably almost every day. And every time they drop like a single together, it was it goes crazy. <laughs> like, yeah. And What a Time to Be Alive is just one of the, like, I think that was one of the best albums of like that 2015 like era, you know? So yes. good. I would kill for another yeah, one. I, yeah, I would not mind um, that one bit. I would also, I mean, this is just wishful thinking, but Kid Cudi and like Kanye again, mm. Kids He Goes drop another, mm. another thing, but I, mm-hmm. I don't think that happens. I would have said like Cudi and Travis like a year ago if you asked me. I think <laughs> I, I talked know, about but it. Like, damn. I, at this point, nah, yeah. don't do it. Um, who else? Oh, actually, you no. Know, I mean, it's either Future and Drake or Cardi and Uzi, but I don't think they're ever gonna drop either. Ooh. But I would, I would kill for that. I would yeah. kill for that. <laughs> you know, <laughs> something about me, yeah. it's just like not not very optimistic about either of their futures. Really? Like, yeah. You know what? Like, I, I don't know. That. I don't know what it is. Like, like I like I don't mind the direction that Cardi's taking with the whole vamp and the yeah the whole that side of things. And, right. Uzi's just very unpredictable and like <laughs> they're both so unpredictable. His yeah. last song, Vampire High or whatever. Did you like that song? No, it was no. Okay, I hated I it, like dude. It I I listened to it once. I've n- I have no desire to hear that <laughs> song ever again. Yeah, and that's this isn't this isn't a whole lot of red take where I said this is the worst thing that's ever come out of music. No, this is like <laughs> legit. Like that was such a terrible song. The beat was terrible. Uzi like I wasn't a big fan. What 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 was the point of it? Like I don't. It was just dumb. I it know. Was, it was just dumb. If was, that's what's gonna be, if that is what like what Pink Tape as his next project, if it's gonna be like that, yeah. then I'm not gonna be too. No, I'm not interested at all. I'll listen to the first three tracks and I'll turn it off. I don't yeah. care. Well, I, yeah, it's the thing is they both are so talented, and so like uh, influential on this new generation like yeah they both have such a big hold on like the current like trends of mm-hmm. this style of music whatever well they're both very different but but they're so like they they have no communication with like their fan base nobody knows what they're doing they're inconsistent like cardi was supposed to drop well he hinted at dropping narcissist like his next mm-hmm. album back in september <laughs> that never happened yeah. uzi was has been hinting the pink tape for like months right and then mm-hmm. That has not dropped yet, and we haven't heard any new news. Like, I don't know. For all I know, Cardi won't drop for another two years at this point. I have no idea. Because a whole lot of red, people were waiting for that album in, like, 2019, dude. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. And then, like, Eternal A Take, too. People were waiting forever for that album. Oh, that one took forever. So long. So, like, at this point, like, I don't know when they're... If they were consistent, then... Well, then again, it wouldn't have the same appeal, though, if you think about it. If they were drop, if Cardi and Uzi drop like three albums each year, like Polo G or like some of these other guys. It yeah. wouldn't be the same because I think the anticipation makes it way better. No, it definitely carries but a factor. There's definitely like a fine line though. Like three years is too much, but like I wouldn't mind like once a year or once every year and a half or something. You know? Yeah. No, I but, think as far as like dropping an album every yeah. two years is yeah. perfect. Yeah, I'm with that. Um, 
But it's a matter of like what these albums sound like. If they, I think if Cardi drops again, I think it's going to be a new sound. I don't think he's sticking with the vamp thing. That's my take. I have, I have yeah. nothing to back it up. I just kind of feel yeah. like it. Kind of feel like it. Well, I mean, there's snippets and whatnot. And I think his sound will be different. I don't know. I kind of mm-hmm. hope so. But I, don't, I wouldn't mind another vamp album either. But as for Uzi, though, I don't know what he's planning. Yeah, I know what you're saying. Yes, it, it's just hard to like. I don't know. I and also part of me just thinks that they're not taking it as seriously as they could. Like mm-hmm. with the impact that they do have on the industry and specifically like that area of the industry. Like yeah. they're that they're one and two. Yeah. They're one and two for that for that side of rap and music. Yeah. Um I, like you said like like the fan interaction like it it speaks a lot and like mm-hmm. I don't know. It's just it's it, they're just kind of they're just really goofy. They are. They're really goofy fellas, and yeah. I guess that's what makes them so admirable. True. So, so but yeah. like a simple like tweet, Cardi be like, "I'm dropping an album in three months," or "I'm working on a new album." Stay tuned. Nothing, dude. Instead, he tweets in like weird cat like caps. Like, have you seen his tweets? Like, uh-uh. they're just I very cryptic. On Twitter. I don't either, but I've just seen them. Like. <laughs> He has a very uh, cryptic tweets that make like no sense at all. Like, it's like, did you just say say when you're gonna drop that <laughs> album, man? Like, you speak English. <laughs> it's so annoying. But then yeah. again, it's kind of part of the appeal, so I get yeah. it. But it's like, dang, man, it, yeah. it's tough. Yeah, it's tough. But oh well, it's all right. They yeah. drop, they drop. They don't, they don't. They don't, they don't. <sighs> well, yeah. Is there any other any other uh, music takes you got right now? Not right now. I kind of got it year, all out like, of my system. Yeah, same. We, we'll year. just have to see yeah. what happens, you know? Yeah, my music, I'm at the point where it's getting repetitive again. We're like, I'm listening to a lot of the same stuff over and same. over again. So it's going to, we're going to have to switch things up a little bit. I'm going to have to maybe switch genres for a little bit. Maybe yeah. Take a little, take a little trap tolerance break. Yeah. That is much needed for me as well. You need to, especially with this. So it's boring, it's yeah. so repetitive, yeah. dude. It's like it all just follows the same blueprint, and then <laughs> yeah. it's it's you really got to be like really good and really like nail it to stand out, you know. Because otherwise, otherwise you're just gonna. You're just gonna, yeah. You know, <laughs> facts. <laughs> and there's nothing wrong with being just gonna. Yeah. I mean, you're 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 always in the charts. You're always on the radio, but like. Just gonna, <laughs> just gonna. <laughs> so that's, yeah, that's about yeah, it. That's kind of where I'm at. I'm, I'm there with you. Yeah, it's fair. But, but I mean, NBA though, <laughs> NBA basketball goodness. has been anything but gonna lately. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, lots of different like MVP conversation switches to a new person every week. No, it's more like NBA tons is a lot like Kanye right yeah. now. I'm not gonna <laughs> exactly. It's Kanye right now. Tons it's of tanking. like. Tons of injuries, like COVID stuff, forcing other players to step up. So many breakout players this year. Like, it's been a good year. It's definitely been a very entertaining season. Yes. <laughs> Where do we start? I know. I'm trying to think. Probably Blazers. Yeah, but yeah, that's what you usually do. We'll Got to talk about the hometown team. Yeah. First and foremost, today it was announced Damien's getting surgery on like his abdomen injury mm-hmm. that he's had for years. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's probably going to, I'm assuming it'll probably be season ending, which I'm so on board with because yep. yeah, I'm on board too. due time, he didn't look right this season. Like he had like one or two really good games. Otherwise he was that, shooting poorly. Yeah. His defense has never been good, but it looked even worse than <laughs> it's ever looked. No, he, he just, just looks like he was hurting out there. Yeah. And yeah. Um, so I'm down for like a, what were they, what was the term for it? Like, a. I don't know, like a semi, not full reset as a team, but like a semi mm-hmm. reset where we tank this season, assuming, you know. We tank, up. but we like do it with a lot of class and like we actually <laughs> yeah. like. And then yeah. it's like, oh yeah, the term is like a soft rebuild. So like, yeah, like yeah, full yeah, on like scrap that. everything, trade Dame away or whatever. But like, I'm guessing the Blazers front office is probably going to sit him the season, assuming we have a bad record, which we probably will yeah. um we get a decent draft pick and then it's up to us what we do with that if i say if we were super bad and somehow got like a top three pick that's somebody we draft and keep but i think if we're in like the draft lottery then we take that pick and then trade it with like roco and cj something and try to 
get like a Paul George in return. Yeah, you know? yeah. no, I like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I but, think that would yeah. that would benefit us a little bit more because that would allow us to like plan it out a little bit better because you get yeah. you get a fresh, you know, number three, number four pick, and like it's it's really up in the air these days whether yeah. or not they're gonna they're gonna be the rookie of the year or you you're gonna see them play one game and then <laughs> you're gonna you're gonna get yeah. a Mark Hill Fultz and yeah. You know, I, I don't even know him. what Mark Fultz is doing these days. He's just injured. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so it's tough. Yeah, I, I, you know, I, I, I'd go with your second option mm-hmm. is get get someone in the lottery and mm-hmm. and and trade for someone that you can plan around. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. That now I would say that the only exception is if we get like number two or even number one, which I don't think is likely, but you know, you never know with the draft lottery or whatever, how it works. I feel like we're we're due for at least a top five this year. You know what I'm saying? We haven't had a top five in years. I've heard the big, yeah, exactly. We have not forever since like Damien who's like the last like notable, like top 10 pick or whatever. Mm -hmm. So it'd be refreshing. But I feel like the big three in college is like this Paolo guy or whatever. He's like a six ten like forward. Just, Beast. Mm. And then there's like you heard of Chet Chet Holmgren or whatever like that. I know kind of, nothing about. I don't know a whole outside lot either. Of NBA right now, but they're pretty much like all big men. The other one's like Jabari something, but they're all like big men who look like they can shoot, like defend. Exact type of kind of player we need, like a power forward type player, yeah, yeah, yeah. and handle the ball a bit. We need a big dude. That's we need what, a big athletic dude. That's what I'm saying. So if we can get one of those guys, I'm down to just run it. Like I'm not gonna expect a whole lot still, because like even though they might be you know, slated to be a, like a great NBA player one day, you can never really rely on like a rookie to carry your team. Yeah. That being said, like if we can trade CJ and like Nurkic for like an, a decent return and then mm-hmm. draft one of those guys, plus like Anthony and Nasir Little stepping up, that's a damn good team. That is a good team. So that's like optimistic thinking yeah. and it could go poorly, but <laughs> Oh, yeah. That's the ideal, in my opinion. No, I'm with you on that. Outside of just, you know, what the average NBA fan would probably say that isn't a Blazer fan would be like, just trade Dame at that point. Which I also get that too, but I'm just like a homer and like I love the Blazers and I want to trade Dame. Yeah. No, that's literally what my dad was saying today. He's like, honestly, like, if we got rid of Dame, it would not be the end of the world for anyone. Yeah, exactly. Like, I, exactly. I see why people say that too like it could be the best of both worlds thing where you get him on a contender Mm -hmm. because we just haven't been able to put a good team around him for years and kind of wasted his prime yeah but at the same time like if we can get it if we can go crazy this offseason he wants to run it back then you got you kind of gotta you kind of gotta do it so like either way that's what's nice is like i'm at the point where like regardless of what happens i'm optimistic like Mm -hmm. somewhat optimistic (laughs) like i don't expect a ring or anything but But no, that yeah, you can't yeah. But especially like, with the Blazers, you can't be expecting. No, that never, <laughs> never. But like, it's kind of fun regardless. Because if we win games now, then I'm like we won. That's sick. But if yeah. we lose, then I'm like, okay, tank the stock. Dude, we got to get a good yeah. pick. You know. So it's it's been. I'm having honestly way more fun watching Blazers since I have since like mm. 2019. Right now, like oh, it's been yeah. it's been a blast. Even with Dame sitting out, Anthony Simons <laughs> has been stepping up. Oh. Um, I don't want to lose that guy, man. No, He's, I don't want to lose him either. And you know what? We probably will just because it's the Blazers. Yep, we probably will fumble the bags. We're gonna get like you know. Well, okay, we got rid of Neil O'Shea, so we might true. we might keep this we might keep this kid for another two or three seasons. <laughs> Neil O'Shea would trade him for like Kendrick Nunn or something. <laughs> Nunn, yeah, <laughs> yeah, he really would. Yeah, <sighs> I, I I believe I truly believe he will be an all star. And like yeah, let's two, talk Anthony. Let's yeah, talk let's Anthony. Talk Anthony. Real quick. I wanted to talk Anthony because yeah. I'm bullish on him, dude. I'm hyped. Yes, fire I think away. He's got, I think he's got superstar potential, dude. Ooh. Not like I'm not saying like superstar like LeBron potential, obviously, or anything like that. But I'm talking like I'm talking like top Paul five George. point guard in the league in six Kinda. years type potential is my mm. my take, right? Mm. Or shooting guard depends on what he develops better as because mm-hmm. he can play both. Yeah. Um, but I truly, truly believe it also depends on if he gets a starting role because he's definitely a starting level player, but he also has to play behind Dame. So yeah. it depends on if we keep Dame or if he gets traded, that affects it. Or if Amphrey stays on the Blazers or he gets traded somewhere else. Either way, I think if he plays like 30 minutes a night on a team and drops like 20, I could see him dropping like 22, 23 a game mm-hmm. like on a, on a team if he starts. Yeah, yeah. And put up just like good shooting. He's a sniper. 
dude, he's got a really, yeah. really nice, consistent shot. Very. And he can do it off the dribble. He can do it off the catch. Oh, like, And then, yeah. like, he's crazy athletic. And you can kind of tell he still hasn't really found his groove in getting around the rim. Like, he's still not yamming it on dudes. Even mm-hmm. though he's clearly got that potential. He's capable. He's capable. But, but I... He's got a floater though. Have you? He has dude, like this little, nice like push floater bleep, shot. Little teardrop. Little yeah, bleep. it's a bucket. Like, and he he's got a great mid range too, which is a like a shot that not a lot of guys no. have in their bag these days. Yeah, and you kind of need it. Like, if the three's not there for him, he can beat his guy off the dribble and hit a quick pull up. Like, mm-hmm. it's money. Like, I truly could see him be an all star in a couple of years. Like, it just depends on if he gets the minutes for it. Because I know it's a small like sample size. He's only played like five games. Yeah. Since Dame's been out where he started, but in that time he's averaging like twenty eight a game on like crazy efficiency. Like I know it's a small small amount of games, but I could see that, especially in a couple of years when he's only going to get better. Like mm-hmm. I I truly am optimistic that he'll be a great yes. great guard yeah. one day. I'm probably just as optimistic about him as you I are. Love that yeah I I agree with you hundred percent, and I yeah. can see exactly what you're saying. Yeah, because like. <laughs> Yes, I got to remember too. We did draft him out of high school, straight up. Like, yeah, like he's one of those rare, rare players that, like, we just it, you picked up. It's like you don't need to go to college. Just exactly. Come you, on over, play you, professional basketball with us. You also got to think that he's he right now. He's younger than Dame was when he was a rookie, because Dame played four years, came in at like twenty two, twenty three, oh, and Anthony's right. like this year. He is like that age, <laughs> so. If you think about it that way. He's like our age. He's like right around. Exactly. Yeah. So if you think about that, like, then it makes way more sense. He's not like 26, 27, like slow. No, he's a very immature player. I mean, he's very mature for a player, but like in the grand scheme of things, he's got so much to (laughs) learn. So much. And he's got a good build for like a good guard player too. Like 6'4-ish, like athletic as hell, like good shot. Oh, he could, I could see him becoming a good defender one day, like. There's nothing stopping him mm-hmm. from just getting oh, better. Oh, if he puts on, if he puts on, fifteen twenty pounds Bro. of muscle. Oh my god! Then he's gonna just be bodying dude. Boom, <sighs> yeah. man. Yeah, he's probably very similar in size and honestly, in athletic capability to John Morant. Straight up, like no, they're very exactly. similar players. I feel like. Yeah. Anthony's more of a shooter, but like mm-hmm, they got yeah. the they got a similar build. They're and, like, yeah, built, yeah. So athletic too, like and fast. <clears throat> they got handles too. And that's another thing I want to talk about. His handle. Did you see the him dude. cross up Patty Mills on that? <laughs> yes, dude. In the finish. Oh my Bro. gosh. He's got better handles than John Morant. That honestly, I think I'm with you. Like they're more. I think he creates more space with them. Like he's shifty, dude. You can see he's yeah. got. Like you could kind of see that size up he hit on. Patty Mills kind of looked like Dame's. Except mm. for Dame would have gone for the step back, but Ant took him to the paint. Yeah. But he also has kind of like that smooth, like, I don't know, his hezzy is smooth. Dude. Mm-hmm. Like even smoother than yeah. Dame's. Like it's nice. And that's that's what I like about Anthony's game a lot is because like he does, he, he looks to go to the basket first. He doesn't look to shoot first. Lillard mm-hmm. looks to create a shot. Sure. That's fine. That works for him. Mm-hmm. But but when you get a player like Anthony who's always pointing their body in the direction of the hoop and they're trying to they're trying to get to the hoop and yeah. what that does with the defense is the defense says, "Okay, I got to play this guy tight right. regardless." And so that what am I saying? The defense it's it's a lot more unpredictable. Yeah. He has a lot more unpredictable game than Lillard does, I would say. Because Lillard, you can almost guarantee I actually I wouldn't say that. Lillard does get to the hoop a lot. True. He does get to the I hoop think, a lot. But I, I, I think Anthony wants to get to the hoop more than Lillard does. Yeah. Lillard's like, okay, I, I I can I'll just step back and shoot if this doesn't work out. Mm-hmm. But Anthony's like, I really want this to work out. I really, I'm going to push this. I'm going to push this. And then he'll be like, Oh, I'll just take a real yeah. step back real quick. And the defense is like, What's going on? Mm-hmm. And of, of course, Anthony's got a little strap on him. Yeah, it's only going to get better. True. Like it's like he's he's really like deadly player. To I would not want to guard Anthony. <laughs> no, I I don't know if I'd rather guard. I'd rather guard John Morant 
than Anthony like, Simons. Bro, it's like John Morant's just going to blow past me and then throw down the most insane dunk. Like, and it'll be embarrassing for me, but like, Anthony will probably drop you. Like, Anthony could. <laughs> oh, Anthony's going to catch way more body. Uh, like, he's going to break way more ankles than Ja will. Ooh. And I. I can, can confidently say that John Morant's going to catch a lot more bodies with with the posters and stuff, mm-hmm. and he's he's going to blow by a lot more people. Yeah, but Anthony Simons has. I think his offensive bag might be yeah. end up being more of like a complete. He's a three level score. He can do it anywhere. Yeah. Like yep. And yeah. imagine if he starts pulling up like Dame range shots. Like he's kind of starting like yeah. like low key. Like he's he gets off a decent amount of threes. I, mm-hmm. I bet you he shoots. Five or six threes yeah. a game at oh, least. He shot like eleven last game. Like yeah, and he he'll hit. He had seven in one game and nine against the Hawks when he dropped forty three the other night. Like that's yeah. crazy. On insane efficiency. Like mm-hmm. he yeah, he's efficient too. Like yeah, and he's also moving the ball well. Like he had eleven assists the other night, which Jeez. like me included. Like a lot of Blazer fans question like if he's a good backup point guard and more of just like a pure scorer, right? But he's showing that he can play make really well. Oh also. yeah. So like, and I didn't really think he had that in him like two years ago, like when he had come off the bench, like he seemed like just yeah. a score. Well, it's hard to tell two years ago. True. We, we hardly gave him Jack for minutes. True. He played like 10, 10 minutes a year. Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was all right, but. Well, now we're finally seeing it though. Like I know, and, dude. And I'm yeah. so excited. Bro. I'm so excited because yeah. the more he plays, the better he's going to get. And that's, exactly. that's how it works in the NBA. He's getting confident too. Yeah, he, yeah. Confident plays a big factor in the NBA as well because, yeah. like, all a lot of these guys, a lot of these guys that are in the league are very capable, but they're not used to shooting in front of forty thousand people or yeah, what, or, um, and stepping up into the moment. Like, yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, having all eyes on you and stuff like that. So it's it's and plus playing with all of these just like legends too mm, like yeah. like that's got to that's got to like have a feeling like like playing against LeBron, Steph Curry, KD like yeah you, you can't you just can't back down go again. into a game yeah. like like you would if you're just going against like Orlando or something you know what I'm saying <laughs> yeah. so yeah, yeah it's, and he's stepping up big right he's now stepping like, up big we just beat the nets with uh, KD and Kyrie playing the other day like, without Lillard without, without Dame, CJ without Norman Without our Norman, third best, our three best players. Yep, and I would say so. Yeah, yeah. which mm. is crazy, mm-hmm. crazy. And it was a good game. Like mm-hmm. and then the Blazers too. We got Ben McLemore, Ooh, who's a, yeah. he's a dog, dude. Oh, he's yeah. just he's pulling hungry. just stupid threes that have no business going. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. And he makes them. You got. Dennis Smith, you got Macklemore. He was in the dunk contest a while ago. Yeah, yeah. You remember back like he jumped 20, over like, Shaq in like a right? chair or something like that. Was that Macklemore when it was that same contest where John Wall won? Right. Yeah, I think that so. one, like, yeah, in yeah, 2014 yeah. That, or something. That goofy one. That yeah, goofy the weird dunk one the Dame was in too. Right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that was like the worst dunk contest of all time. Yeah, that sucked. <laughs> also, okay, no, okay. The last dunk contest was. Oh yeah, we were like just okay, yeah, Anthony. Anthony. Yeah, let's go, him. Anthony, my boy. One, but that shit man. sucked. <laughs> <laughs> if he would have done that against the 2016 dunk contest oh, with Aaron been, Gordon and Zach, he wouldn't even. Um, he would have. He would have gotten like a three. He would have been clowned on. It, but yeah. hey, I'm so proud of him. It's all right. It's all right. Yeah, that's our boy. That's, yeah, that's a that's dub. a dub, right? That's a dunk contest. No other team, no other player has that. He's nope. got that. So. That's cool, but yeah, dunk contests. Yeah, yeah. I'm just saying. I know. I'm curious if. Well, he hasn't been dunking that much this year. He had a gnarly poster like a month ago, but mm-hmm. since then, like, so I, I doubt he'll probably be in it again. But I would love to see like Nasir Little be in it. He's been catching bodies this dude, year. Yeah, dude. He's been. He's okay. He's a lot bigger than I thought he was. Mm-hmm. Like I obviously like I watch him play and see him, but like, like I guess what I'm trying to say, he plays bigger than I yeah. than he could i guess facts like he's like six five six six but plays like he's six ten <laughs> mm-hmm. yeah yeah no he yeah he definitely carries himself and he plays like yeah like he's like six eight six nine six ten mm-hmm. and yeah that that helps him out a lot but. yeah yeah he's nice dude yeah. i'm excited like equally as excited for his his career to pan out as like anfernees too because mm-hmm. he, he can get it done on both ends like and he's not a fr- he does not shy away from the moment. Like, no. Well, <laughs> and did you did you did you see like he was diving for the that Kyrie ball thing? under Kyrie? Yeah. 
Yeah, I love that. I love, I it love that, I dude. Love that, man. That was Give sick. me that, dude. <laughs> Kyrie's mad even better. Yeah. I love do you see what Nasir said about it too? Yeah. He's like, I'll do it, I'll do it every time. I'll do it every game. Bro. I love that, man. Just yeah, that's what villain. I need. Yeah, talk to Kyrie like talk that. Shit, More man. people need like, to yeah. talk to Kyrie like that. Yeah. Kyrie Ah, <laughs> uh, Kyrie's kind of a bitch, dude. Yeah, Honestly, I, you, man. I don't like Kyrie that much anymore. I don't either. I don't like, I mean, he's a decent basketball player. Yeah. I don't like. No, I'm with you. I don't like Kyrie anymore. I, I'm 100% He used with to you. be really cool, really dope. He, I mean, I mean, he, he was. Like 2016 Kyrie. 20, like 2012 to 2016, Kyrie mm-hmm. was like, even like 2018, Kyrie was like, oh, this guy's like, he's dope. He's really good. Yeah. He's a dope guy. But now it's like. Bruh. Like, We're yeah, sick of him at this point. I'm like, sick of him, dude. Like, and I, like, sure, I respect the dude. the going in a different lane with all the spiritual stuff and whatever. Cool. I, I don't Do support your thing, it. Whatever. Do yeah. your thing. Yeah. Don't don't mix that in with NBA basketball. Right. Don't bring that it's into different. the league. It's different. It's outside yeah. of the league, dude. Yeah. I'm with you. And that's that's a big problem we have just in, in the league and in yeah. sports these days, too, is mm-hmm. the politics are now part yeah. of the game big time. And you even saw sure. it with when we were in the bubble, people wearing the jerseys, uh, all, oh, yeah. all their customers. I forgot jerseys. about that. That was funny. It's just like, like I get why, but like, yeah, it's a sport. Mm-hmm. Like it's, 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 it's just basketball. Yeah. It's nothing more like. Don't add just to it. Thing. Don't subtract to it. It's just a sport. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's what you get paid so many dollars to do. A lot of money. <laughs> it's a lot of cash. Yeah, but... Uh, yeah, well, we like Nasir Little. Just we like Nasir Little. It, we love that boy. We, we love like Anthony. That. We love our boys. We were talking We were talking John Moran a little we're bit, but... John Moran. I think we could talk about him more, because I don't know if yeah. you know, you're paying attention, but he clapped up the Warriors last I night. I watched dude. it, yeah. Yeah. Well, I didn't watch the game. I watched the highlights, but bro, he <laughs> went in, dude. Like he he's playing like a top point guard this year, like straight up. Mm-hmm. And props to the Grizzlies too as a team outside of him, because like it's not like he's carrying them or anything. Like uh, they won like ten games in a row without him when mm-hmm. he was injured. So it's not like saying like he's the whole team or whatever. Like props to Desmond Bain, like Jaron Jackson, Dylan mm-hmm. Brooks. All those guys are nice too. Mm-hmm. But John Morant, though, <laughs> <laughs> the dude, backbone. He was just he threw so many alley oops the other uh, against the Warriors too. Like he he's a playmaker too. Like every possession is where he would just be throwing one up to like Brandon uh, Brandon Clark or whatever his yep. name was, and then uh, Jaron Jackson. There's throwing down, dude. He was just throwing them and catching them, dude. Yeah. Like, <sighs> dude, and then not only that. He'll just take you to the paint. Like he, you see the M one he had that like the last minute too. I think so, yeah. <sighs> Against like the best team in the league too. Like out outplayed Curry. Like outplayed Clay. Like just play. He outplayed just, and locked them up. Yeah, he's dude. a. Good, all of those guys were just playing crazy defense too. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, he's special. This kid's different, and. Do you have any thoughts? Because yeah. I'm about, oh, okay. about to talk about Ja for like three minutes, maybe. Do you do your talk right, first? So yeah. here's the deal with Ja. Yeah, he's a different type of point guard, and I told you this earlier today or yesterday yeah. or whatever in the Snapchat. I told you he's just a different, and I've said this before. He's just a different <laughs> basketball player. He's You've not been hyped on him since he was drafted, dude. I dude, some about him. He's he's just my dog. I mm-hmm. love him. Yeah, but he like like. What sets him apart from a traditional point guard is a tradition. I like. I would say a a good, solid traditional point guard, and I'm thinking of Magic, AI, <laughs> Prime Kyrie, uh, really good Lillard, like like a really Chris Paul, like like yeah, a really good just black and white point guard. Mm-hmm. You get you get someone who leads the team. That's their main role. That's sure. your main role as a point guard: not to shoot, not to pass, not to rebound. You, you're the leader. You're, yeah, you're the backbone. <clears throat> Those guys led their teams really well. And what Jaw does is, yeah, he takes that, but then he takes he he takes away the the normal 
like 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 uh like the ball handling let's say for example every legendary point guard has had insane handles mm-hmm. insane ball handling Steph Curry Kyrie Magic had great handles you know mm-hmm. AI like like that that like that's almost their trademark mm-hmm. and with Jaw he's a pretty good ball handler yeah. but he's not great matter yeah. of fact he's not even top 20 in the league for ball handling mm-hmm. easily but he's he that's not he realized that that's not a necessity you need for a point guard like mm-hmm. like that's like it's what it's it's what's taught for point guards is is ball handling but that really like doesn't get you too far you know you what you really need is like i said the leadership which he's got yeah but it's the distributing and what he does is he's all over the court yeah. he's all over the court Everywhere. he's not at the top of the three point line he doesn't hover around you know the top of the top of the half you know mm-hmm. which is what a normal point guard does mm-hmm. 90% of point guards do they just kind of hover around the top john morant is one minute he's in the corner. Next yeah. minute he's at the top of the key. He's everywhere. Next minute he's on the other side. And then 